work. <laughs> Okay, we're going on. So there are others on your bills that we need to bring over. I'm going to close this out. Hello, <clears throat> Pastor Woodard, how you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm trying to see what this thing was doing. <laughs> well, I'm good. I, I am doing well. I am doing well. All right, so it is a blessing to be here on tonight. Uh, we're getting ready to get started. We're about four minutes after the hour. And so um, I'm going to um, ask those who have joined us tonight if they would uh, like, share our video, and then if you will post your name and location. Uh, we want to get in the habit of doing that so we'll know who is among us and uh, welcome them officially to our Bible study and then reach out to you. It just lets us keep up with uh, how effective we are and who we are reaching. So if you don't mind, even if you're from Monticello or at the church, uh, be sure to post your name and your location. And at this time, I'm sharing myself and we're going to come back in and uh, we have a word of prayer and a review of the lesson from the last week that we met. Um, I've been waiting on how pastor's going to bring this one forward and everything. And so just been trying to work on myself too. <laughs> These lessons are, ooh, and it seems to be that uh, I'm being tried in the fire. <laughs> I tell you. <clears throat> so, uh, Anyway, it's a blessing to be alive on tonight. So I'm just going to go ahead and say a word of prayer, and then we're going to open up. Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this day that you have made, that we can rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, and um, God, there's no trial, no test too great that we can't pass. And I pray tonight, God, that before we go into studies, that you will settle our spirit, settle every matter that is before us, God, in our minds and our hearts, God. Forgive us, oh God, for saying things or doing things that we should not have done. Father God, for even leaving you out if we have on today. But we thank you mostly, God, for your grace and for your mercy that covers us, Father God. No matter where we are, what we do, you still show your unconditional love. And we are grateful, God. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for that, God. I'm so grateful. God, continue to revive us, continue to change us, continue to renew us. Oh God, uh, in your spirit, oh God, renew our hearts and our minds that we will be people that represent you as the light. In Jesus' name, I pray and bless our uh, pastor on tonight. Give him revelation knowledge. Let the knowledge be clearly understood, Father God, and practice going forward. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to <clears throat> go to. I think it jumped up, but I'm going to do a little review as Pastor is is uh, over in the kitchen doing something. Oh, he's looking for his phone. All of a sudden, he missed his phone, and I'm sure he has notes. That, okay, your notes are on top of your phone right there. 
Uh, you can tell we passed 25. <laughs> but um, listen, uh, the last time we came together, we were in 1 Peter 2 and 2, of which I am going to call up and read. I don't know why I try to go through the Bible when I can uh, call it up quicker if I'm on my online Bible. So I want to read it. And then I'm going to give some notes um, from the last Bible study that we had. It was very, very interesting and thought-provoking and life-changing. So <clears throat> I really love our Bible study. But the scripture that we came from was like newborn, newborn babies. You must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness, okay? And <clears throat> some notes that I took, I think we ended on, I think this was the lesson where we ended on such a powerful <clears throat> understanding. You can help me, Pastor Woodard, uh, that um, for all of the spiritual growth that we have been talking about, it is not a lavishing thing or a thing that um, is to put us on a pedestal and for us to just forward because, hey, yay, we're spiritually grown. You know, I've heard people through the years say they've outgrown this, or outgrown that in the church. Um, I've out, had them say they outgrown church. But as Pastor Jerome spoke to us on the last Bible study, we were off last week, he talked about our spiritual growth was for discipleship. Am I correct? Amen. It's for discipleship, which for me puts a different perspective on how we choose to grow. He said that we decide to get, we make the decision to get out of spiritual daycare. And I think just knowing that um, discipleship is the reason, discipleship is the reason for everything. Uh, for us being saved, moving forward to be witnesses, it is about our discipleship. Just knowing that puts a different perspective on things for me, right? Uh, I would like to choose to grow up so I can help somebody else because otherwise we will be a stumbling block. He also talked about disciplinary action is necessary for growth. Many of us don't like dis being disciplined. Um, and I'm not even sure sometimes if we know that we are in that, you know, when we are being disciplined, we know when we're being disciplined by people, but do we know if and when we are being disciplined by the Lord? Um, he also talked about, uh, God places us around his most valuable possessions and we are accountable for mishandling the assignment. So we have a reason to grow up because if not the assignment, we either going to miss the assignment, right? Mm -hmm. Or we're going to mishandle the assignment thinking we're getting it right. The next thing he talked about, maturity takes time. Also, as much as we want to grow, as much as we choose to get out of spiritual daycare, we do have to uh, be patient, patient with life, patient with us, uh, I'm going to tell you, I have to be honest, it tears me up when the Lord rebukes me. It does. It does. And I know that's a situation for me uh, and my mindset. So I have to pray and uh, I don't want him to humble me. I have to humble myself, not thinking I have it all together, you know, so much and being so crushed. Uh, sometimes it's not just love, it's just attitude. Uh, then he said, Jesus went, this was important. Jesus, uh, went 18, had 18 years of growth for three years of ministry. Wow. We 50, over 50 years old. And some of us are still, we've been in ministry over 20 years and we're still struggling or we say we in ministry and we're still struggling to grow up. He only had 18 years to grow up, to do three years of ministry. That was a crash course to me because for 18 years, I'm thinking about 
from kindergarten to 12th grade is sometimes not enough because we got folks that don't go to college and they go there 10 years for a four-year degree. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Then he said, um, grow in wisdom and favor with God and man. Our spiritual maturity helps us grow in wisdom and favor with God and man, okay? So God wants to bless us, but he can't sometimes because we are not ready. So that's my review. Uh, Pastor, did I do all right? You did all right. You did, you did, you did well. You want to go ahead and finish the lesson? Ah, no, but I will read the scripture, introduce the title. So before you introduce the title, <laughs> okay. uh, discipline. What, what, what is discipline? Control. Self-control, being able to maintain. I don't know. Uh, Mr. Ann need to say Mr. Ann, what is what is discipline? Um, it can a discipline can be correction, and it depends on how much correction you need. Uh, and uh, uh to um get it together. Um, <laughs> and like Pastor uh, Clarissa said, you know. Uh, self-control you know you you need discipline to uh, maintain self-control um they're aligned that you know that you cannot cross or else there's consequences uh for you not doing or for you doing that that you know you should not be doing amen amen the, the 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 definition in in the profession of man is control gained by enforcing obedience or order by use of punishment or reward. Mm. Mm, say that again, Pastor. Control gained by enforcing obedience, and that can be done obedience or order, excuse me, and you use punishment or reward to gain that. You said forced? Control gained by enforcing. Enforcing, okay. Yes. Okay. Enforcing obedience or order by use of punishment or reward. We So we can... We have the power to enforce or obedience before we're punished to, discipline. to discipline, discipline. I'm discipline. sorry, for discipline. We have what now? We enforcing it. We can enforce. Can we enforce? Let me ask this discipline in our own lives before we get to that. That's part. self discipline. That's self discipline. Okay. And that's where the Holy Spirit is, right? Amen. Okay. Okay. But then when we are not filled or don't allow him to operate, that's when we are, what's the last part that you say? Punished? Or rewarded. Or rewarded. Okay, just ask. That's the new new thing in, in school. When, when, when one discipline is not met, sometimes they suggest you reward them for being obedient. Versus punishing them for not being obedient, you reward, spend more time rewarding them for the things they do right. Okay, well, it's you... kind of like you look over what they do wrong uh -huh. and reward them for the things they do right with an attempt to get them to do more right than wrong. I think that's God. Okay, you think God does us like that? Yes, I think because He don't have to wake us up. Right, right. He don't have to uh, provide for us or to protect us right he but he had, does have unconditional love mm -hmm. and then when i think of the scripture that says he reigns on the just right as well as the unjust um he keeps making ways for us even people who uh deem themselves atheists or spiritual and not religious people who are not particularly practicing church going uh or confessing salvation uh, know about it, kind of read about it, but he still does things for us. And I tell you, I can say that because I, I honestly was thinking today or yesterday 
um, I, I watch YouTube pastors and, and people preaching. And one particular pastor is he's, he's on here and he's, he wants you to know the difference between worship songs, um, eras that the church is making. Um, he talk about eras that we are making as human beings, according to what the word has said. And uh, he picks on every little bitty thing until it came to me that, you know, and people were saying, well, I didn't know that. So when I really do this, I mean this. And I think about the sincerity of heart and God really, this is the part where God only does know our heart. And if we are sincerely coming to him, I think even in error, mm -hmm. he will, that's where grace comes in and mercy because we're not actually sinning. We, we think we're serving and then eventually he will show us but every little thing now, people are picking at this ain't right. That ain't right. You didn't explain that right. You don't have the right revelation of this. And I'm going, if that was so, the very people who are trying to stay away from legalism are still being legalistic in their own way. That's just my opinion. And so, yes, I think that he will still reward us. I, I still think he rewards us. Now, there, I'm sure there's a part two, mm -hmm. because he says as far as getting to heaven, there are some things well, that, that we do that. Well, here, here's the thing. Here's the, the main idea is um, gifts come without repentance. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of rewards, a lot of things that we get because they're a gift. Mm -hmm. He gives them to us freely. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do nothing for them. Mm -hmm. So yes, he rewards us, even when, when he knows, you know, that we're not going to do right with him. I mean, he gifts people that just don't do right, but he, we don't do nothing for it. He just gives it to us. Right. Now we talked about the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Those are things you have to work for. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you, you just can't love people to hit you, love people to cuss you. <laughs> That's, that takes work. What? <laughs> I'm just saying that that that's a whole different arena. That's, there. that's working out your soul salvation that, with fear and tripling. That, <laughs> oh no, we gotta yeah. re, we gotta watch her. Trina said, "Discipline is to correct a problem." Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And she's a sergeant. <laughs> yes, well, she ought to know all about. She it. know right. about that. So we want to we want I want to throw this in before we go and go if, on Proverbs twenty nine, and it's just. You know, we always talk about, it says, beat them, you know, and all that. But in Proverbs 29, it's amazing that before he uh, he uh, made a, a, another, um, there's something else that we use quite a bit. Let me say it that way. Over in Proverbs 29, if we go to, uh, let's see, the 15th verse. Proverbs 29. And we're still talking about maturity and, and what aids in maturity. Uh, you know, what, what things must happen in order for us to mature and us to become disciplined because no one, as we talked about earlier, no one really likes to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. But discipline is necessary. I was telling her at a situation and I was, I, I threw out, I said, what happens in the Bible version of discipline is people give up on it too fast. Mm. Mm. Because the Bible is clear, it says here, when the wicked are multiplied, transgressions increase it. Mm -hmm. Get that now. Mm -hmm. when, when the wicked are multiplied, transgressions increase it, but the righteous shall see their fall. Mm -hmm. 17 gonna say, correct thy son. And he shall give the, the give rest. Ye, he mm -hmm. shall give the light unto your soul. Mm -hmm. Where there is no vision. That's amazing. He come right out there mm -hmm. and talk about, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's we, revelation. We, we, we use that all the time where there's no vision. 
the right. people parish. But in other words, but why are they parish? Lack of discipline. Wow. Okay. Because he goes up, says the wicked, they multiply. So we got to go in. And the transgression, they increase. Mm -hmm. All because they're undisciplined. Undisciplined. Oh Lord. And undisciplined people says when there's no 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 vision of discipline, not only just a vision of the purpose for your life, mm -hmm. but a vision of the purpose for discipline. Mm -hmm. No plan, no plan of action, mm -hmm. just whatever. Everything's funny. Oh, they're gonna grow out of it. No, they may and they may not. But the Bible says beat them. Oh, oh. I just want to throw that in. Ooh. Because we're talking about maturity, we're talking about maturities and steps. So we got to get to the point where we graduate. Okay. And when a lot of time when people become comfortable, they never graduate. They stay right there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like your shoes. Mm -hmm. You you can wear a shoe that's too tight mm -hmm. to look cute. Show sure enough. But the side effects from it. A coin. Yeah. <laughs> Bunions. <laughs> You end up destroying the very thing that you need. Okay. Yes. To walk on. Okay. That right. you need to have balance in your life. Okay. The need thing that you need to help you go out and earn a living. So if you can destroy your feet. Okay. The Bible says the steps of a good man. If you that. if you're destroying your your feet, you can destroy your life. You can exactly. I just want to throw that out there. That's a whole different, wow. whole different lesson for a whole different time. Okay. Amen. 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 So we 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 want to make sure that everyone is maturing, and we talk about maturing means to become fully grown, mm -hmm. not just an outside appearance. Because mm -hmm. people can, uh, it's kind of like a, a physical condition. We had a, a seminar today, and 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 we were talking about the effects of drugs. Mm -hmm. And you can see the outside effects of drugs, mm -hmm. but you don't know what's going on on the inside. Right. You know what the outside look like, right. but the inside could be worse. Liver. It's the same way with us giving, getting comfortable on the outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. And being in turmoil mm -hmm. on the inside because yes. the Bible talks about there's, there's two, two things two that wars. intimate wars going on uh -huh. you may look the part like you win the war uh -huh. but on the inside you tow up you, exactly uh -huh. so we got we got to mature and the only way we can mature is to eat the sincere milk uh -huh. of the word yes the bible says that he sent his word to do what to heal us uh -huh. to deliver us uh -huh. to set us free uh -huh. Whom the Son sets free, mm -hmm. we know it because the Bible says they're free indeed. Yes. So if we're going to desire the sincere milk of the word, you got you're going to grow. You're going to grow from it. But if you don't desire, if you're comfortable where you are, you're going to be. You're going to remain a baby, and you're going to have baby-like mentality. You're going to have baby-like mood swings. You're going to do things like a child does. It. Maturity is a process. It, it's not a a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. every phase, every situation requires a different level of maturity mm -hmm. because there's some things that we can do naturally, but there's other, other things that's going to come against us. Mm -hmm. As believers, people think because they become saved, because they join the church, because they give their life to the Lord, that that is the fix all. No, that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Trials and tribulation, they do come, but he they don't come to destroy you. They come to mature you. Mm -hmm. They come to give you uh, 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 the strength and the know-how to, to, to be able to handle things that are, 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 the Bible talks about us being in this world, but not of this world. So we can't handle things like baby him. We got to handle things like our father. If he's our father, then we handle things like our father. There should be a difference between mm -hmm. a Christian and an unbeliever. I'm just not, I'm not talking about your outside difference. I'm talking about your walk, your, inside. your talk, your love, your inside. Have you have, do you have compassion? Do you have empathy? Do you love people in spite of? That's a whole different level of growth. Lord help.
Amen. Amen. And 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 we don't get there by not exercising mm -hmm. the word. Amen. Amen. It was Jesus' willingness to go all the way and to obey. It's going to be our willingness. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. That's the reason. That's the reason he said, "Father, let Thy will be done." We have to do the same thing. We have to give Him permission mm -hmm. to let. His will be done in our life. If not, we'll always be falling off the bus and saying, Jesus, no. Yes. He know, he know, he know my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he know all that. But he also said that if, if he's in you, he'll be more than the whole world that will come against you. Right. So if he's in you, then not only does he know you, but he know what you can do through him, through Christ. Mm -hmm. We can do all things. Amen? Yes. Amen. So it's the willingness to obey the word mm -hmm. that shows that we not only have maturity, but we have spiritual growth. The willingness. We have to be willing to obey. And I know that's a bad word this day and time. Mm -hmm. Obey. Well, nobody want to say obey. It's like the worst thing ever to obey. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. so if, if he's telling us obedience which comes you know that's a derivative of obey if he's telling us that that that's what we need to do mm -hmm. then why is it such a bad thing it's a bad it's kind of like you was just saying everybody want to turn the scripture turn the word into a debate it's not a debate it, it is really mm -hmm. it is so it is what he intended for it to be. We can mix it, match it, make it seem like, make it fit every situation, every circumstance. But he says, thy word have I hidden in your heart mm -hmm. that, that you will not sin against him. Mm -hmm. If you don't have his word in your heart, you're going to sin against God. And, 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 and a maturing Christian is like a, a, a maturing person that's striving for mastery on their job. They want to please somebody. I they like want to do everything right. They want to do things correctly because they want the next move. I like that. This you is like graduation that. This, season. Yeah, 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 yeah. The next step. Help us, Lord. This, this is what we're talking about, Greg. Right? This is everybody graduation needs to graduate season. Yes. Because they're going to flunk the test. Yes, yes. So for those that's ready to graduate, yes. for those that's ready to press on, you have to grow spiritually and that comes when you live by the word of god amen no other way you have to live by the word of god it's non-negotiable amen it's not something you can bog about it's not something you can do the day and not tomorrow i know people saying well there's no one perfect that's not what i'm talking about but we're striving towards mastery every day you shouldn't make the same mistakes you shouldn't curse people the same way Every day, you may slip and fall, but once you slip and fall, you should say, you should, Father, I stretch my hand out to thee. You should grow stronger by giving more of yourself to God so you won't be tempted, so you won't be pressed, so you won't do the same thing continuously. That's maturity, that's growth, amen? So we need the word of God to grow. Reading the word is okay, but living it, <laughs> Is a whole different ball game. And that's what we have to learn. We have to learn to live by the word of God in order for us, it to change our life. Learning occurs, amen, when it is done. Not cooked done, but learn occurs when you can perform it. Amen. If I'm teaching you how to shoot a layup correctly, and you you cannot do that correctly. That means you have not learned it, or you have not practiced it correctly. Okay, you may not make it every time, but the process, the steps, should be the same. Amen. You may do it nine thousand times. Uh, in, in in athletic, it's called muscle memory. Amen. In 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 in, in spiritual, it's called it's called spiritual growth. <laughs> Amen. So we have to be willing to obey. It's the willingness of us to please not only God, but to be pleasing in his eyesight. So we must know, we must use the word. If we're not using the word, if we're not 
in guffing, eating the word, then we will not grow spiritually. Amen. And we have to surround ourselves by others that are eating and growing material. You, you can't stay on, on that, on that, I'm gonna get there anytime, or or I'm not there yet, or or I'm under construction. You can't stay there. Jesus didn't stay there. He got on the path of maturity and kept on, kept on, and kept on until he was fully grown. Amen. So James uh, says this: a James uh, one twenty two through twenty five. Are we there? Am I moving too fast? My reader done left me. James 1. Read, read them. Okay. You want to start 22. verse 22? Yes. Do not merely listen to the word. Mm, and well, so, wait a minute. Do okay. What? Do not merely listen to the word. Oh, okay. And so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. So James is saying we have to do what? Go from what? From hearing, in other words, from hearing to what? To doing. To doing. Mm -hmm. And it's ironic that, that, that he said you look in the mirror and you forget they say, well, you, they say you forget what you look like. That's what, that what he said. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. Because I, I guess what, what is that saying is pretty much saying that we can sit up and listen to a thing. There's a difference between, I think sometimes people say hearing and listening. Mm -hmm. Because one of them brings action. Mm -hmm. And the other one is just go over your head. Mm -hmm. So if you don't plan on being obedient and disciplined to the word you actually live in your own life no matter how much of it you know no matter how much church you go to or whatever you call part of your spiritual being if you don't if you don't practice the thing you really get they say it unless you deceive yourself you really deceive yourself like everything is okay and so it becomes where everything we do uh, is excusable, not by people, but by ourselves. It'll be okay. And we'll say that until the day we die. Actually, not doing sounds like to me, we, we create blindness. Mm -hmm. we, we, we allow the scales over our eyes and our heart. And if we don't watch it, it will harden our hearts to the point that we're not listening because the listening is actually with your heart. It's not with your head. When it comes spiritually, we listen with our hearts. Mm -hmm. And it's our heart that opens and the light illuminates in there and shines on everything that needs to be changed and, mm -hmm. and causes us to humble ourselves, to repent, uh, to be revived and, and all of these things, to love, to love God, to love the things that you're talking about mm -hmm. as far as we want to, we want the master to be pleased with us. But otherwise, we're going to start saying stuff because James talked about that. We're going to start saying stuff like, I don't care what people think about us. Mm -hmm. I don't care what people think about me. I'm not living for people. People can say this, people can say this, but God know me or, you know, God got me. Mm, sound like you got yourself because he we are to be concerned as representatives and disciplined on this earth what we are reflecting in the earth because we are image of him what do we bring to the table mm -hmm. amen so so going from hearing to doing is what james is, is talking about there mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 one of the keys to growing in god is obedience mm -hmm. to the word of God. And not only just when, when you become obedient, you learn to apply that word. And uh, it's ironic that when you apply something, that means that you do it. 
And what hinders a lot of times people from doing it is they be, let me, let me just go on say it. They be reluctant to do it because of what they expect people to think or expect people not to think or they expect people to respond a certain way. It, it's, it's not your job to wonder how they're going to respond. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul planted, Apollos watered it, mm -hmm. and who gives the increase? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. we we can't get so much uh, involved in what are they thinking or how they're going to respond. Your your job is to apply, and if you stay consistent in what you are applying, if you stay consistent in how you are acting, you stay consistent in what you are doing, then people will be less judgmental mm -hmm. because of your consistency. Mm -hmm. When you become inconsistent, it's when you catch all the flat continuously. I see. But when, when you are consistently being who you are in God, mm -hmm. people will change before you change. But when you become inconsistent, you're apt to change too because you're going, well, why this and why that? God is going to cause it to happen when they're ready. We may be ready. We may be doing the work and it may be appearing as though the work is going undone. But the Bible tells us plainly to work our own soul salvation out. And in, in, in working our own soul salvation out, we are spreading, we are discipling, we are spreading the word of God to others. It's up to them whether they want to choose because the Bible ain't saying, he said, you choose this day whom you're going, huh? Who are you going, who, who, who are you going to be? Who are you going to be? Who are you with? Choose. It's a choice. So in, in, in other words, um, if, if you look at the Greek word for, for looking into, it's, 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 it, it means to, to bend over or to peer into. Mm -hmm. uh, it suggests that a person's intensely studies, scrutinize, and meditating on the word. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that means that you, you, you dig into it and you meditate on it. And you and you see how you, not someone else, you see how you are adding up. Mm -hmm. You see how you are being obedient, not how others are being obedient, being obedient. But this word is for you first. Mm -hmm. And as you become convinced and convicted and become sudden and become obedient to the word of God, others will also. So you have to be in, in intense study. You have to meditate on his word mm -hmm. and you have to give the word a chance mm -hmm. to, 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 to do what it needs to do in you fully. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to do something you fully, then you have to fully obey it. You mm -hmm. can't undock the I. You can't uncross the T. You can't make it fit them but not fit you. Mm -hmm. You can't make it fit that situation and not this situation. Mm -hmm. The word of God is true and everybody else is a lie. Mm -hmm. So the word of God has a power to change us. Mm -hmm. Key thing though, if we allow it to. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will not change you if you don't want it to. But if you have a desire to be changed, it will change. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is quick, mm -hmm. it's powerful, it's sharper than two than a, in a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joint and the marrow and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the tents of the heart. Wow. The word is. The word takes care of all that from the inside out, from the outside in, mm -hmm. all the way inside the bone. The marrow is inside the bone. So the word of God penetrates through the flesh, through the muscles, through the bone to the inside of the bone. Mm -hmm. It goes all the way through you if you desire it to. 
Amen. It, it, it'll, it'll, it'll cover every aspect of your life. People say, well, 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 I'm not there yet. Well, you ain't let it cut you deep enough yet. You ain't let it penetrate enough yet. Because right. we it, keep running from discipline. Right. If, that was the other lesson. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you say, you, I'm not there yet. Because meaning that if we wanted to be there, we would stay there and take this godly discipline mm -hmm. and, and uh, disciplinary act or whatever. Uh, I guess maybe it's wrapped around convictions and 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 flesh and and fighting within and all that kind of stuff but as you, we don't stay around it you said we don't give the word a chance because we don't stay around it we don't give and i say this too we don't give the church a chance nor do we give anybody call a pastor prophet apostle a teacher which represents god we don't give a chance to stay around that either because it get hot sometimes. Oh yeah. So when you going to go do your own thing and you're going to pull others with you that have the same like mind, I just want to hear a little bit today. Feel good because it's Easter Sunday. Uh, it's Christmas. It's whatever. And then I'm good to go because, mm -hmm. you know, I showed up. Mm -hmm. So I got my A this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just saying. But that's that surface cut. Right. In order for him to, to get rid of some of those things that so easily beset us. Okay. You know, right. those hidden things, those mm -hmm. those things that you think nobody know about, mm -hmm. those things that, that you have uh, 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 put makeup over, that thing that you have put a hat on, that things mm -hmm. that you think that you have under control that you, 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 you won't smoke for three months, but you get around somebody to smoke, you say, well, let me smoke. Uh, you won't drink for a year, but you go to a party and you, you drink. Though That right there takes a deeper cut. Mm -hmm. That right there takes a deeper piercing. That right there mm -hmm. takes him doing skillful surgery through and through on you. Okay. <laughs> because even in in, 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 in in worldly terms, you can have a first degree burn, a second degree burn, mm -hmm. and a third degree burn. There's different levels. Mm -hmm. First degree, you just, you know, you do a little something on that, it, it take care of itself. Mm -hmm. that second degree burn, you know, you, you might need to go to the doctor. But if you have a third degree burn, sometimes they have to do oh, skin drafts. Sometimes they have to cut all that dead tissue out of yeah. there and grow you some new. Amen? But the, the thing about that is the wound, the scar, is always a reminder of you could have lost it all. And that's what that's why we need to allow God to skillfully cut us to the marrow because we could have lost our life. We, 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 we could have died in the midst of us not maturing and not heard those words, well done. Eternal life is a gift. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you can, you can go purchase silver and gold, no. It's not something you can do good enough to get. It's a gift from God. And God wants to equip us with, the, with gifts and tools to get us to the point where we can receive that gift. So our lives would be meaningful, not just us doing what we desire. Amen. Not my will, Lord, but let thy will be done. So the word of God has the power to change us. It will allow it to, according to Hebrews 4 and 12. Mm -hmm. He tells us it's quick. It's like a, it's like a surgeon. It, it cut us. Uh, the word is, it will open us up so we will listen and obey because there's other things whispering you know it's amazing that we have you know two ears and one mouth but you know the devil whisper on this side and you you try to you can block him over here but it's whispered on that side you block him over here it whisper on that side so so the so what happens is that the word of god it, it, it cuts and it pierces to the soul and to the spirit and to the joints and to the discerner of the stuff that you're thinking mm -hmm. and you start to think enough then it becomes a part of your heart and then it gets in your heart and soon enough, you're gonna, you're gonna do it. So in essence, the word of God is there to 
mature. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> God wants us to listen skillfully like a surgeon. We, he, he wants our full attention. He wants us to be that attentive to the word. The word says, thou shalt not. That don't mean not, that thou shalt not right now. That means forever. It, it, it's tight. I'm sorry. It's tight. Yeah. But it's right. Yeah. It's tight. So are. our biggest critiquer should be ourselves when we go to compare ourselves to how we live in according to the word. You should all, when the word of God comes to you in the house of God, you should not get upset if you are maturing because you should already know that the Bible talks about the word is a discerner. So when that word comes, all it's doing is just reminding you and telling you what you should already know. Okay. You already know. You already know things ain't right here. So when the word comes, but you didn't have to say it like that. Well, I'm just saying it like like it oh, ought to be. I mean, it, you should, don't get mad because you you should already know. It's like a, a athlete. Don't get mad if you can't make a left hand layup because you ain't worked on it. Don't get mad when you can't make a three pointer because you ain't worked on it. So when when the commentators critique you, why are you mad? Because you ain't worked on that part of your game. Okay. If you're working on that part of the game. Then they're going to give you prompt. Well, he shot better tonight than he did yesterday or last night. But if you've been shooting horrible all season, they're going to say, he ain't been working. Mm. So when the word of God comes and you've been already working because you are being attentive to the word, it's mm. not so offensive. Mm. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so the more obedient the more open you are and the more obedient you are to the word the more you grow and the more you mature ain't nobody mad but who the devil but the devil the devil does not want you to mature we talked about the fruit the devil don't care nothing about your gifts but he don't want you to grow in the fruit because the fruit is where it's at. Okay. That, 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 you, you can speak in tongues. You can prophesy. You can lay hands. The devil don't care nothing about that. You can do that and be a drunk. You can do that and be a sinner. But you can't those fruit, you can't do that. that that's a different level. You can't do that. Amen. You can't do that on your own. Apart from him, you're going to fail. I mean, you see people all the time, they just, they just as gifted as they want to be. They can sing, shout you out, preach you out the church. Amen. Tell, tell you what the Lord said and go right on out and get them a joint or a cigarette and go right on about their business. Cuss you out in, the, in, a, in a heartbeat. Talk about your mama, talk about your cousin. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you, I hope ain't nobody mad but the devil. But true disciples, they display fruit. They have love in their heart. They love their enemies. They love their neighbors. They do unto others as they would have them do unto them. It, it, it's, it's a whole different level. I'm sorry to go all that way, but I just want to bring it out so we can be sure that whether we're growing spiritually or not, growing spiritually is a whole different ballgame. It takes a whole different commitment from me. It takes a different commitment from the leader to the usher. It, 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 it takes a different commitment. And that's, that's when I say graduating to this point is a choice because you have to fulfill all the duties. We got to have graduations coming up. We have graduations this past. And, and, and one of the statements that the principal or the superintendent or whomever is doing the ceremony says is that all these seniors have completed the required requirements wow. to graduate. Lord have mercy. If you say, if you graduate someone 
and they have not completed the requirements by law legally, you are held accountable. That's not it. If they come back and find out that you didn't do something right, you can be sued. That's natural. Mm -hmm. So that accountability piece, God puts that in place. He puts that in place for a reason because this, this what the son said, this ain't no ordinary what? Worship. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't all it ain't ordinary to be a spiritual mature person you're not an ordinary you're extraordinary everybody can't do it mm -hmm. everybody's not willing i'm gonna say to pay that price i don't think it's ready i think it's willing i was sitting there thinking willing ready is yeah, those are two different yes. things you gotta yes. be willing and, and and we see this all throughout the bible All the, it's not it's not anything that's new. Mm -hmm. How many disciples did he have? Yeah. One deceiver. <laughs> okay. Amen. Anyone have any any questions, comments? I'm sorry, didn't like that. We're gonna. Go ahead. We're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna ask that before we talk about what we're gonna talk about the next time. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. y'all so quiet on midnight. So, Pastor Wood up. <laughs> you gotta talk lie. back if you can. Look, I am just taking it all in. This is really has been an inspiring and good lesson for us to look deep within ourselves and know where we are because we need to know without a shadow of a doubt where we are so that we can grow. Because if you don't know that you need some growth or, or, or what, if you don't know where you are, you, you can't learn more. Mm -hmm. there, I mean, there's no way. If we don't know where we are and we need to know where we are and don't get upset if we're, if we're not where we thought we were, mm -hmm. it's just time to just make some corrections and, and, and let the word do what the word do and, 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 and begin to move where we are right now and not, um, get upset because the word done did something that you wasn't expecting it to do on today, tonight, or whenever, um, and, and and just go on and, and, and move forward and just say, okay, God, I hear you because you are speaking to me. It's not the pastor pointing out my faults. It is the word letting me know where I am. And there's nothing to get upset about. The worst thing to do is to be upset and move yourself 10 times, 10 spaces backwards. Amen. Then you got a lot of more cleaning up to do. The Amen. word does have a lot more cleaning up to do because we didn't got upset about something that we already know about. Like you said, I knew I, I ain't been working on the left-handed layup. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to do one, I can't do one. Somebody say something. There's no point of getting mad. I ain't worked on it. Amen. 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 I need to accept where I am and begin to do what I need to do to get better. Amen. And I, I'm all, just enjoying myself. <laughs> I don't need to say nothing. <laughs> I got, uh, we got one of the uh, listeners say, if you don't know where you are, how will you know where you have to go? You won't. Right. You will not. Mm -hmm. You will not. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you know, uh, the, the 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 Christian era is, is at a point where we really must stay consistent and persistent to the word. We we can't give people enough word. I mean, the song is okay, the dance is okay. All those things are part that enhances the service, but we really must be a teaching, teaching, teaching ministry. And that's the thing that I noticed in my profession is people reject teaching because it costs them 
to uh, commit or cause them to interact or cause them to become accountable. When, 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 when you reject teaching, you know, uh, I, I see young people all the time throw fits because they're rejecting knowledge and they don't think that it's important because they can't see the importance of they're not going to always be 10, 11, 12. And sometimes people become comfortable with, with that childlike mentality and not realize being an adult is a whole different ballgame, it's a whole different world. So as we mature, as we grow, we have to know that there's steps, there's a process, the process, the process. And we have to keep pushing the process. If we don't keep pushing the process as individuals, we don't keep in, we, if we don't keep eating, if we don't keep on feeding ourselves, we can go outside and get us some vitamins and some nutrients and all that, but the word is what's going to really cause you to sprout and to grow and to bear fruit. And we know what happens to the tree that was not bearing any fruit. It wasn't good for anything. And we don't want to be that person that's in the church or so they're a believer that's not good for anything. It's kind of like uh, a person going to school all year long and never put forth any effort and come back and wonder why they're in the same grade. You can do that. You wasted a whole nine months, a whole year, a whole one nine and did not get any reward. We don't want to be that way when our life on this side is over. Every day you wake up, you're dying, literally. You don't want to live, as people say, cliche, cliche is, you don't want to live in hell and then live in hell. I'm switching it up a little bit. You want to live in hell and then die and go there. You want to live in hell and then live in hell. Because you're going to be alive and feel all that. Just like you're going to be alive and feel all that in heaven. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to be alive and feel all that in hell. So you don't want to, you don't want to live a life and not gain anything spiritual from it. Yeah, you can you can go to Paris, you can go to Rome, you can go on a cruise, you can go do whatever it is you desire to do. But that's all good and fun while you're here. And I'm not knocking having enjoyable time, but I'm just saying there is a place that you can't pay to go to. Amen. God bless y'all tonight. We, we I really enjoyed uh, sharing and 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 uh, getting back. Uh, that's so good. Words. I didn't take no notes. I was I didn't <laughs> write things down. <laughs> we'll write this down. We're gonna be in Second uh, Timothy three and sixteen. Um, and, we, and it's basically talking about a mature uh, child will receive correction of the word receiving at 16 and 17 we'll probably do 2 Timothy 4 3 and 4 tell me again now start over 1 Timothy 3 16 no 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17 mm -hmm. And then 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. That'd be about all we can get to. And basically what we're going to be talking about is when you mature, you will receive correction. If you oh, not, oh, yeah, when you mature, I, you receive it. Okay. You know, and one of the things I've learned in my training is when, when I meet with people, I always let them know that this is not personal. It's just business. Okay. You can't take the word of God as somebody coming against you personally. Or bashing you, perhaps. It's just it's just business. It's just God's business. All they're doing is taking care of God's good. So we can't we we can't take it personally like somebody's personal attacking us, but we should take it personal enough that it causes us to change. Amen. Mm -hmm. We change all the time. People say, well, I just I just don't know how to do it. Uh gas is down. I paid three thirty-ish about a month ago. Mm -hmm. It's down to three eleven now. Mm 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm lacking. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. Okay. You want you want to uh, tell them a little bit about something about it? Uh, if they've been blessed. Okay. By the words. Okay. All right. If you've been blessed by the Bible study on tonight with the Great I Am Temple, uh, Pastors Jerome Pace and Clarissa Pace, uh, plant a seat on it. Uh, you have the opportunity. I said it. One other Bible study. Remember when we went into the church, we generally, uh, grandmamas used to say, don't go in empty handed. And I think it's a scripture. I remember Miss Jean used to say that. The Bible study. Don't, don't go in empty handed. Yeah. And so uh, be a blessing to the ministry through Givelify, through Cash App, TGIATP, or on the website, TGIATemple.org. Or you can mail it in to P.O. Box 241, Monticello, Arkansas, 71657. If you don't have a home, you can drop it off by coming to church. Uh, 300 North Main Street, Monticello, Arkansas. We are there every Sunday at 1030 a.m. Um, also, on Tuesday nights, we have uh, intercessory prayer at 630 by way of uh, conference call. Uh, yes, I will. get it, and then. Um, and then we have uh, on fourth Saturdays, we have children's church ministry. Uh, that's for ages two to 12. Uh, we're throwing in a few of the teenagers, but um, I do want you to know if you have them two to 12 years old, bring them minister Ann and uh, Sister Michelle Lucas uh, running that ministry and Sister Polanda Woodard. Uh, I'm excited about the growth of the Children's Church, Saturday Children's Church at our church on fourth Saturdays. Also, uh, what else? And um, oh, on first Sundays at four o'clock, we have our empowerment sessions. These are not online. They are in person only four o'clock. Uh, we are dealing with life, life, uh, subjects that touch life. Uh, but right now, we've been talking about money. And so we started the first part of Investments 101, uh, first part one on last month on first Sunday. We'll go into part two on this coming uh, month in June. So you're welcome to join us there as well. Okay. And so um, for whatever reason, just call us, visit us. Uh, visit us online if you have your church home. I like it that I get a chance to church hop. So I get a chance to come to churches <laughs> that I have uh, that I don't get a chance to come to because they're going on at the same time. OK, so um, that's all, Pastor. That's all I have to say. Uh, we can get ready. I'm going to tell you this. That song came to mind. It just is your all on the altar. A sacrifice laid. I ain't gonna keep singing because my voice is gone, but somebody need to hear that tonight and just know if you're willing to uh surrender all, amen. And that's what we believe it is about surrendering all. Amen, amen, amen. We are so happy and blessed to be able to share with you tonight. Uh thank God for you tuning in, and we're just gonna pray that. That Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this night. We thank you, God, for each and every one that uh, took time and sacrificed time out of their schedules, God, to to learn and to uh, hear from you, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that this word will not fall on on un, 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 unproductive ground, God, but it will fall on fertile ground, God. That you would continue, God, to stir up the gifts that's within each and every one of them, God, that they will become what you are calling for us to be, God, in a dark and demissed world, God, that we will be a light, a lamp, God, upon a hill that men may see, God, and they be asked, God, what must I do to be saved, God? We pray, God, that someone somewhere, God, will, will that we will come in contact, God, that our life would not be in vain, God, but our life would be so, God, that it will radiate you, God, that they, God, will reach out, God, not only to us, but God, but they will reach towards you, God. We know, God, that you can do it, and we believe, God, by faith, God, that it's done, God. We, God, we are calling in, God, all those, God, that don't know you in the part of their sins, God, we're calling them, God, into the marvelous life. We thank you, God, and we pray over each and every household tonight, God, 
We speak, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that the enemy will cease and assist, God. We speak healing over each and everyone's body, over their mind, God. Give them the mind of Christ Jesus, God, when he thought, God, about quitting, God. But he said, nevertheless, Lord, let thy will be done, God. We pray, God, a spirit of endurance, God, upon them, God, that they will wait upon you, God, and wait upon you, God, and wait upon you, God. You said, wait upon you, God. That's, God, what we're asking, God, that you do, God. If, God, we don't become weary in our well-doing, you said that we'll reap, God. We thank you, God, right now because it's reaping season, God, and we believe, God, that we're just right, God, for what you want to do in this time and this season, God. We pray right now, God, that you would keep each and every one from the evil one. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless and good night.